Well, hello, hello, hello. I am Mr. Nine Ian Edwards, and, but the important point for today is this is my sister-in-law, Mary Todd Lincoln, better known to the world as Mrs. Abraham Lincoln. Well, my goodness gracious, though, I, I must tell you, I, I'm still trying to catch my breath, but good afternoon anyway. <laughs> and you know, it was just a short while ago that she and I and my wife, uh, Elizabeth, we were all in our parlor in Springfield, Illinois. We were sharing a pot of tea. When, lo and behold, what, Mr. Edwards and I were puff, transported right here. And that happened just after my dear wife, Elizabeth, left the room to go into the kitchen, I suppose, to get another pot of tea. Well, maybe she was just tired of listening to Mr. Edwards and me discuss the upcoming election between Mr. Hayes and Mr. Tilden. Oh, I know you people think it's rather odd that a lady would be discussing a gentleman's uh, prerogative, politics, but I'm telling you, Mrs. Lincoln here has been discussing those topics for, I don't know, a long time. I bet you it started even when you were a child back in Lexington, Kentucky. Oh, absolutely. My father, Mr. Robert Todd, was connected by blood, intermarriage, and friendship with many of the most important political figures of that day. I'll say, right down the road from the Todd home, <laughs> I should call it the Todd Mansion, <laughs> was the estate of Senator Henry Clay, the leader of the Whig political party. I do recall riding my, new, riding my new pony to his estate, well, for I often visited there. Well, Senator Clay was hosting a party, a dinner party, and yet he introduced me, a 13-year-old, to his friends, and he said if he was ever elected president, he would want me to be one of his first invited guests. Well, I, I thanked him, of course. And then I told everyone, well, I would enjoy someday living in the president's mansion myself. Well, after all, one of my kinfolk, Dolly Todd, she lived there when she was married to Mr. James Madison, and he became president. When, when Miss Todd turned 21 years of age, uh, she came up to have an extended stay with my wife and I in Springfield. Ho oh, ho, I was impressed with her level of education. You know, she had more years of schooling than I'd say any young lady in the South, or the North for that matter. She even learned to speak fluent French. Oh yes, and my dear wife told me on the social scene why she <laughs> She made quite a splash, especially among, among the single gentlemen. Oh, the word went out that Miss Todd could make a bishop forget his prayers. Oh, well, Mr. Edwards, you are embarrassing me. Well, right off, my dear wife decided to line up suitable single gentlemen to introduce to her sister. Well, now... <clears throat> I have always been independent-minded and strong-willed, and believe me, my sister's choices did not interest me. Oh, but she got very excited when she learned that Mr. Stephen A. Douglas uh, was smitten with Mary. Oh, now, there was a whole pack of people who thought that Mr. Stephen Douglas could someday become President of the United States. But the leader of that pack? was Mr. Douglas himself. Well, you're right there. <laughs> but happily, that was when Mr. Edwards introduced Mr. Abraham Lincoln to me. Oh, my wife was upset when I did that. I mean, after all, from her point of view, and she wasn't too far wrong, <laughs> Mr. Lincoln had neither the wealth nor the family lineage to what, marry into the Todd family? <laughs> but later, at a cotillion, Mr. Lincoln approached me and said he wished to dance with me in, to use his words, the worst way. Well, I accepted, and believe me, he did dance in the worst way. <laughs> he, he was a much better talker than he was a dancer. Oh, yes, and when we talked, it was not about flowers or weather or other conversational flufferies. 
We discuss politics, literature, the theater, well, and of course, you know this, poetry. Oh, you must have impressed them then. Oh, yes. <laughs> I swear, she must have had over a hundred poems put to memory. And Mr. Lincoln was such a good listener. And I was impressed with his fledgling legal career and his desire to someday serve in Congress and eventually to become a United States Senator. Oh, and in all the months of discussions we had that followed, I became convinced that Mr. Lincoln, with his brilliant mind and his bulldog determination, was going to achieve all of his ambitious goals. And, and I wanted to be right there at his side, helping him to do that very thing. And then later, well, <laughs> as I had expected, Mr. Lincoln proposed marriage. Oh, and when my wife <coughs> learned about that, she teamed up with uh, her Todd family, and they tried to talk her out of accepting the proposal. And now that went on for months, and then why well, Mary defied her family and announced she was going to marry him. Oh. Now, I did mention being strong-willed, did I not? <laughs> yes. Well, my wife realized that from the beginning, but uh, she gave in at that point and decided she was going to support the marriage. Not like the rest of the Todd family, but she agreed. And Frank, you were told by my sister you had to get married right in our parlor. It was a small wedding, but a very lovely one. Let me think now, it was November 4th of 1842. Yes, and then, well, I had to quickly adjust to married life. Well, Mr. Lincoln got us the best home that he could afford, a rented 8 foot by 14 foot boarding room above Springfield's Globe Tavern. Oh. <laughs> mighty, mighty cramped quarters, I'd say, for someone who had been raised in a mansion. <laughs> and it must have been lonely, too. After all, he had to go out on riding the judicial circuit. Uh, he'd be gone, what, three months in the spring and three months in the fall? Yes, that's true. But fortunately, Mr. Lincoln was home for the birth of our first child, Robert. Oh, Robert Todd Lincoln. That's what she named him. And I think it was a pretty smart idea because, after all, the Todd family was upset about the wedding, so... She married, pardon me, she, she named the firstborn that uh, you had after her father, Robert Todd. I bet that pleased him. Well, it certainly appeased him. Well, yes, I knew it would, for I had always been his favorite child. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, do not tell my, my sister Elizabeth that. I, oh, I wouldn't do that. Oh, oh, no. And then my father began sending me a small annual subsidy. Didn't I say it was a pretty smart idea? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> and with that assistance, well, plus, of course, the, the income from Mr. Lincoln's legal fees, we were able to purchase our first and only home. Oh, yes, a five-room bungalow on uh, Jackson and 8th Street. Yeah. Oh, but Mr. Lincoln was concerned. He was concerned he had to put out so much money to buy that home. What? It cost him $1,500. Yes. Mr. Lincoln was always more worried about money than I was. <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> I was just so pleased to finally have a parlor to entertain guests, oh, and especially those gentlemen from my husband's sweet political party. Oh, yes, when it came to politics, I think Mr. Lincoln's law partner, Mr. William Herndon, described him perfectly. Uh, when he talked about ambition, well, he said that Mr. Lincoln had a little engine of ambition that was always humming in his breast. <laughs> And my ambition for his success was always humming, too. Oh, yes. When he would return from the circuit, he and I would discuss all the pertinent events of the day. And before Mr. Lincoln would go out to give a speech, he would first read it aloud to me, always valuing my opinions. Now, you know, I knew a lot of politicians. <laughs> Not a single one of them ever did that with their wife. <laughs> 